Hello there again, everybody. Boyd back with you and welcome. Well, the video that I'm producing today is a really special one for me. I want to say a shout out to uh, Kenny May over at Moonwalker Models. Kenny's put together a really nice uh, Chris Cotel in memoriam tribute group build. And so uh, I'm more than happy to take part in that. Really glad to be able to do this and uh, do this for Chris. Uh, totally well deserved. And um, so Chris was always really fond of doing figures and so I thought I would do a figure for this little tribute. I took uh, took part in a tribute build to Chris a few years ago and did the tiger tank and had a lot of fun doing that mm -hmm. and uh, that was kind of outside my boundaries at that time so since I do, uh, don't do a whole lot of figures this is kind of a little bit outside my boundary too and especially um, being kind of new to 3D printing but uh, I've always wanted to do this figure. This is Kane from Robocop 2, uh, the uh, cyborg that we saw in that movie probably one of the scariest cyborgs they ever did on film. I just always thought it was awesome with all the uh, detail and the articulation and the multiple weapons and just really menacing, really cool look. A couple of years ago, they came out with a, a static figure of this from Chronicle, which is uh, Phil Tippett's company. A lot of you guys know Phil Tippett from Star Wars fame, doing the uh, miniature work for those films and then doing RoboCop 1 and RoboCop 2. But um, always uh, wanted one of those, but they were really expensive. And again, it was just a static statue so looking around after i started getting into 3d printing here i found this beautiful uh file set over on uh game body this is for a 1 8 scale cane figure you can uh build it one of three ways you can build it either out of pla using a filament printer uh second version is a resin printer uh which are both uh posable and then they give you a third option in resin of a smaller 1 18th scale uh or 1 16th scale i'm sorry um static version so i opted for sort of a hybrid of the um posable and the static i'm going static for the lower half um just because this is really heavy and it's really big and his legs just simply won't support all the weight up on top i'm going to get into a whole lot of stuff here about strategy i use for printing this out and why i did certain things but uh i'm going to take you through the whole thing in this video you guys and get them all finished up um i've got several hours into it so far you can see i've been printing everything here's just a sample bag here of all the parts he's got a lot of movable parts a lot of detail i've been working on the upper half here uh the torso getting things put together and again i'm i'm going to articulate some of the stuff on the um the upper half here um with his head being movable some of the arms and everything up on top movable he'll be able to swivel on his hips and things like that uh we've got two different heads we can use on this the one with the uh crazy television display screen with his face in there screaming you know going insane and uh his regular helmet head here and um this is just super super cool guys i'm really really having a blast with this um you can see i'm in the middle of printing some additional parts here again i went to the static version on the legs and i just simply did the calculations to uh upscale it because that static model is in uh one sixteenth scale our bigger guy here is in one eighth so i just doubled the size of that and um, now I can put the static legs onto the, uh, the rest of the model, which will be posable. And then over here, we're printing um, the base, and we're doing that on our FDM printer here, our Viper. And it's just about finished. I caught it just at the right minute. It's probably got about 10 or 15 minutes to go. This is a really, really nice base with the uh, OCP logo on there. And you can see it's got the nice little um, raised pegs for mounting his legs in place, which we can glue down, and he'll be on there nice and solid. So that'll turn out really good. We're gonna do a nice paint job on that. And then over here, I'm uh, printing some uh, additional parts. These are his arms. Two of the smaller like subarm assemblies up on top, I'm going to be um, uh, making those static as well. But uh, we're gonna have his gun arm posable. Mm -hmm. A couple other little details up top will be posable. So he'll be, he'll be able to have a few different uh, looks to him when we uh, finish and put him on display. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy with how it's going. Got some parts curing up over here, a couple of the arms I was talking about. So let's get back over to the bench, you guys, and we'll get things going here. I'm going to sit down and um, just uh, start doing some of the assembly work, and then we're going to do a bunch of little detail painting all over this. A lot of the painting on this is going to be done by hand, you guys. Um, I'm going to put a basic coat of uh, metallic silver over the sub-assemblies here, these legs and the arms and things like that. Then we're going to come back in and do a lot of little, you know, um, washes and weathering and little hand painting details here and there. Um, everything on this is hand painted. I don't have any decals for this, so I had to paint on the little red stripes down there, all the little markings on his body and all that kind of stuff, but it's been a lot of fun. And um, 
So let's get started. I'll get the camera set up on a stand here and we'll uh, have some fun, some fun building cane. Can't wait to see what this looks like when it's, when it's all finished, guys. I've wanted this for a really long time. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, well, we're over on the bench now getting ready to do some detail painting. As I mentioned, we're going to be doing this by hand. And uh, I'm just using these good old craft acrylic paints, you guys, just like Chris Cortell always did. And uh, they work great, so why not? Um, we're going to start off here. I've got these uh, auxiliary arms, this one on the right, and the uh, kind of welding rig, they call it, on the left here. The welding rig's got some kind of copper details and some black on it. So we're just going to start off here with the... Uh, the right side auxiliary arm and we're just going to do a basic wash on that now I'm just using this same uh, black paint here and I just got it watered way down and I'm just going to um, start going over this and highlighting all the little details and just bringing out the life in this thing very easy to do this is water based so if we get you know a little too much we can always take it take it back away just get a wet q-tip and just wipe it off but we want to lather this thing up pretty good. Um, looking at the movie, uh, you could see that the, the cane became more and more beat up and more greasy and dirty looking and, you know, weathered as the movie went on. In the very beginning scene when they first introduced it, he looks pretty good. But just after he gets in his first battle with Robocop, he starts looking quite a bit different. So I'm going kind of the halfway mark with this. I'm going to... You know, I don't want him completely beat up like he was at the end, but um, I just want to add, you know, that extra amount of, a little bit of extra layer of wear and tear on it that we would, that we would see. As you can see, just, you know, I'm, I'm not being careful at all with this. I'm just going in all the nooks and crannies and putting it on, lathering it on pretty thick. I'm using this, uh, I'm cutting this with a, uh, isopropyl alcohol I found that this crap paint works really good that way I've been using it with just straight up water but it, it uh, flows a little bit better especially if you use it to spray and um, it dries a little bit quicker this way and I think when using it as a wash it, it, it uh, you know kind of sticks where you want it to a little bit better than it does with just plain water too so this has been working pretty good getting in these little recessed areas here around this little claw in the front. Make sure we get in these little gear things here. Okay, basically something like that. Now I'm just going to kind of take my paper towel and just kind of pat on it a little bit just to kind of get it off of the high spots. And then uh, we're gonna redo a couple spots where that took it away. I especially wanna make sure I get it in these gears and everything. So it highlights the little teeth in there and all that kind of good stuff. Basically, just like that, you guys, just brought it right to life. Looks completely different than it did before. We're going to do the same thing over here on this side. And then, uh, you guys can't see here, but on my computer screen, I've got a still picture up of the uh, parts that I'm working on right now. You know, screen grab from the movie. So I can kind of see where my colors are supposed to go here when I start painting on the copper and the black on this part. This whole little area right in here is kind of black with a little bit of copper detail and these little tips up here are copper. They call this the uh, welding rig. Looks pretty lethal in the movie. That's what I like about doing weathering, you guys. You can just kind of do your own thing.
just making sure, like I said, to pile it on extra thick where these little teeth are, so they show up real good. <clears throat> Anything we want to highlight, we'll just kind of dab a little extra on there. switch over to some regular black here straight up out of the bottle I just like to take these open and dip right into the just use the lid as a little cup with the paint in there we're gonna start painting this little detail right here And a little, little bit of that uh, metallic finish peek through on it here and there too, guys. It gives it that kind of used and chipped and battle damaged look. side here. Just wiped my brush clean and all I did with here was uh, just left a little bit on there so I can kind of dry brush some of this uh, little detail back on here. Again, I want that uh, those gears up there to be uh, very weathered. Looks like or very dark. Looks like that's all they were in the movie. Okay. neat thing about this too is the more I look at the screenshots you guys they um there were textures and everything on this paint they actually were kind of sloppy in some spots you could see where they didn't do a totally perfect paint job on it and I think that was just to make it look more um you know like a utility machine you know kind of a I don't even know the word I'm looking for here kind of an industrial looking machine
we're going to go back over this after this is dry too with some uh i've got this little tamiya weathering powder and we'll just kind of highlight over some of the little things that will make it look even more worn okay so we got that the basic black area done there so I'm just cleaning off the brush with some regular water. We're going to switch to our copper color up here and do the, uh, the welding tip detail. Neat little feature on tan. You can see it because it's a nice little color contrast going on there. It's good and soaked into my brush. Let's get this part painted. Spain is known for um, not covering so good on the first attempt. A oh, little bug visitor there. Sorry, guy. Can't have you getting into our paint. So, you have to kind of work with it just a little bit. But it eventually does, does the job and looks really fantastic when it's dry. some of that copper detail and then we've got some of that going on down here on the uh, in the black area on these little ribbed areas here or right next to it so I'm just going to kind of brush that in letting it actually mix with this black that's not completely dry, that way it gives it that same kind of weathered effect. And then we'll uh, touch up with our black around the edges where we went over just a little.
get that little extra detail in there. Right now I'm not worried if I went over on the black a little bit, you guys. I just want to make sure the corners are all backed up in the... Uh Color looks fairly uniform in there. Switch back to our black. Now we're just going to do a little touching up around the edges, you guys. Just like it looks in the movie, I'm looking at it more and more. It's it's like I said, they didn't do a perfect paintwork on this stuff, you guys. They made it purposely look a little bit, you know, rough looking.
see up here. good to me you guys so I'm gonna leave it just like that this guy is hard to stand up right now so he tips over really easy I gotta be careful with that okay so let me find something to stick our arm on top of or to dry here okay I'm gonna just kind of take a look at this one more time and highlight a little bit more with this more solid black do a little rub-ins here and there just highlight around these little teeth a little bit You can see what I'm trying to do here, you guys, these little teeth right here, these gears. I want these to be highlighted pretty nice. like he's got some kind of leaking grease going down here and there but not too severe yet not like it does later on in the movie okay so I'll let these dry a couple minutes and then we're going to um, come back and get those glued on to the side of our guy here and then we're going to be working with the uh, the lower half after that you guys I want to get the legs all set up on the base because we're gonna be able to glue the the main torso onto that and then when I work with the final parts here of getting the, the main gun arm and the uh, other arm here on the other side I'm gonna be uh, those are gonna be posable so I want to have the ability to you know have the model standing up and have it stable where I can work with all that stuff so let me get all that set up here and uh, let our paint dry for a few minutes and we'll come back and take a look at that All right, so we're moving right along here, and what I'm working on now, you guys, is I'm working on the uh, the main arms. I've got the uh, the gun arm already done on the uh, left side, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. But we're working on putting together the right main arm now. The uh, small auxiliary arms on each side are, are already done and glued onto the discs, the movable disc here. You can see we did the welding rig there. Um, those were done with the static files. I wasn't too worried about these being all articulated and all that, but the... Uh, the main arms on both sides especially the gun arm I wanted to have that articulated so what they have you doing here you guys is they have you using the actual 1.75 millimeter filament from your uh, filament printer and so I'm just cutting out little pieces of this uh, and I worked out a simple little method for making this work so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our um, shoulder joint together here we're just putting that together like that and we're going to make this little pin so to do that I'm just using my lighter and um, getting the tip of it a little bit warm here. And then we just kind of press on it when it's still still warm a little bit. We need to do a little bit more. And just kind of mushroom that end over there a little bit and make that nice little kind of rivet head looking piece. Then we're going to push that through our joint. Pull it all the way tight just like that see that and then we're going to clip this off real close with our uh, snippers here okay and then the trick to this is um, the pin itself doesn't have to move you guys so 
Um, I'm just taking some of my solar res here and just coming in and making a tiny little dome on the top of this. Kind of let it settle in a little bit more. We'll put a little bit more on there. So it looks similar to the other side. And then we're just going to cure it. Now we have our joint. Now you can see um, they have this sort of cam mechanism here. You can see on these little teeth, and it doesn't actually do very much. Um, it's going to need to have a little bit more force on it than that. Otherwise, it's just going to flop. It won't stay where you position it. The side to side one we don't worry about too much because that one works pretty good. So another solution I came up with that is more of our solo res, you guys. I'm just going to put a little layer over the top of these little teeth. I don't want to actually get it down into the mechanism itself and glue it in place. I just want to create an extra little layer here of thickness on top of that. We're going to cure it real quick. So that way it'll have a little bit more pressure on it. And when we move it now, you'll see that it's a lot stiffer. Okay, so now we need to come and do that on the back side of it here. And this will stick on this bare resin really, really good. So if you, if you use a little too much, you can take a little uh, grinding tool or, or some sandpaper or something like that and um, shave it down a little bit. Now this will have a lot better chance of holding position when we uh, when we want to pose the model. I've got, you know, about 50% of the articulation in the upper half. I wasn't concerned about getting every little bit of it, but we got some neat stuff that we'll show you when we reveal the model here once it's all put together that actually works and moves. The lower half we did with the static legs, like I mentioned. You can see now this is a lot stiffer. It's, it's basically staying where we put it. Okay, we can go in here and put a little bit more if that's still not enough but it's a lot better okay so now we're moving down and we're going to be installing these parts so I want to make sure I orient this the right way we've got this this long piece right here with this piece facing that way this piece goes in the middle we've got this outer part here that faces sort of that direction and then we've got this cap that goes straight down Okay, now in this case, looks like this actually sits on this little part right here, just like that. Okay, and I think it does. I want to make sure we line everything up. We've got a pin that goes through here, you guys. And this is oriented this way, kind of up. And we've got this little pin right here. Okay, so we're going to pop that through. It's got like a little expansion joint on that. You have to be careful because this resin is a little bit delicate. I'm going to go ahead and get it all the way seated in this cap here. Like that. And then try to make it go through. for us just like that kind of test this out and make sure it it does move but it's stiff that's actually what we want you guys we want it to be stiff it's got like a little cam mechanism in there like I said it does move we're not going to be moving this thing a whole bunch so as long as it's stiff that's the main thing I want I want it to be able to keep its position. Let's see if it goes. We 
which way it goes here. I want it to kind of come up like that. Stay in place. Okay, so here's our shoulder. Now we've got, let's bend this straight down like they've got it showing in the picture. Okay, now we've got it like this. And we've got more going on. Okay, we're going to be making another pin. So this basically goes. Okay, they've got a small little slot there. This real thin piece of resin is supposed to slide down into that, apparently. There it goes. Okay. Like that. Definitely make sure I orient this the right way. Looks like it's good. Okay, then we're going to make another pin. Let's cut this off nice and straight. Same thing again. little rivet head. We're going to push this through. Okay, so what we're going to do here after we got the pin pushed through, you guys, is we're going to make a little another dome on top of this. Just, uh, just a fast net in place. Like I said, the pin doesn't have to turn. Just make it look like the other side as much as we can. Okay, I'm going to cure that up. We just don't want the pin to fall out. That's basically all we're doing here. We've got one pin to go, and then we're done here on the bottom half of this part. Okay, so we've got this little piece right here now that has to go in, and uh, we've got these these little fittings on here. You can see for the detail, the hydraulic lines, and it looks like they want the ones facing up. To the outside, so we're going to do it like that. Make one last pin here. Let's cut that off so it's nice and flat. Looks pretty good. Okay. This one through. Keep my finger on the back side to make sure I keep that absolutely tight against that, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna clip this off as close as we can. Try to get it just a little closer somehow. I want that to be nice and flat. dome on here. Let that settle for just a second and hit it. My hand shaking because I'm holding this really, really tight and squeezing on it, you guys. Okay. Now we've got this joint functional. Let's see, we're coming down like this. Make sure I'm doing everything lined up the way it is in the picture, you guys. Okay, then we've got our hand that plugs in here at the very end. So let's go ahead and push that in. Careful, it's pretty delicate. Just like that. You can see these fully posable fingers here are pretty cool. And again, we'll see if we have to stiffen them up a little bit. Alright, you guys, so that's our our right side arm. 
And now there's going to be a little bit of detail that are going to go on this. We have these little hydraulic lines, so I wanted to show you something real quick about that. Um, they, they want you to use this filament, okay, but it's really stiff and it's not going to allow for much posing. So I'm using this solder instead. It's basically the same diameter. It's got a lot more flexibility to it and it's already silver like it's supposed to be. So I'm just cutting out little pieces of that and gluing that on. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now, you guys, is I'm going to, um, we're done with all of our other stuff. I'll kind of clean things up here a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting these. I've gotta paint the silver on the upper part here. We've got the shoulder piece that goes on up here. I'll show you that. It's got a little slot right here. You can see it just goes on like that. And this will glue onto the uh, disc right here. Now you can see it's got this little peg sticking out. I'm going to be super gluing that. I'm going to be, have to be really careful to get just a little bit of super glue on that and then stick this down on here. Um, kind of like that. Okay. Um, I don't want to get any glue inside the cam mechanism itself or this won't be able to turn. So I'm going to have to be really careful with that. But what needs to be done now is this needs to get painted, you guys. So that's going to take a little bit. I'll get this all put together, get it put up on the model, and we're going to come back and show you the final reveal. This thing will pretty much be done. I'll go ahead and get the little solder parts put on there. And then we'll explain how we finished everything up. Be right back. All right, everybody. Well, we made it to the end here, and here's how uh, our 1/8 scale cane figure turned out. Here he is, all mounted on the base and everything. Got the base all painted up real nice. This is a really cool model. I've got the camera backed up quite a bit here because he's pretty tall, but uh, he turned out great, you guys. Everything worked out nice. Uh, we got most of our articulation working. I'm just going to kind of turn it around here a couple times and show you guys how he looks from different angles and um, really happy with all the detail and everything they, they did another outstanding job on this whoever designed this model as well like I talked about with the Nautilus somebody really went to town here and um, got all the details added and um, this is a really cool display I'm really happy with it we got a couple little things you know we can move his fingers here we can move his arms these are all hinged, every, uh, every joint on his fingers. Over here, these fingers on the gun are hinged as well. The gun can actually, it has this thing they call a hammer. This thing can actually extend and come out, but I don't want to do that because I've got the lines hooked up back there, and it takes a whole bunch of time to, um, you know, get those work back to where they're, they're, they're pieces of solder. So I had them flexible so they can move, but I don't want to spend a, lo a lot of time on um, getting those put back in place but his head's fully posable here we can change directions with that um, one of the neat features here is that we can rotate this is kinda tricky but let me get his arm out of the way here we can rotate this one and um, kinda get his arm back something like that it's a little floppy but I don't plan on moving this around too much you guys um, let me see if I can get this in a decent pose here. Let me see which way this will turn. But the point to this was, you guys, we can bring this little gun up here in the back that he had. In one of the opening scenes, Robocop shoots that off. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to probably have to put a little bit more of that, uh, that resin in there. Let me see if I can bring his arm back up like this. You can pose them in different ways. There we go. Got his little gun going on there. Then we can turn his head again like he's looking in different directions. I originally had his torso hinged too, but it had a lot of play in it. And it would kind of flop from side to side. He's really, really heavy on the upper half. But uh, there's kind of a look at the different things you can do with this guy. This arm here rotates as well. So you can kind of like have his gun... If you want to uh, move this down, this one's got a little bit more of a, a detent thing going on there. Got that little cam mechanism. But you can um, have his gun more relaxed or whatever. The shoulder can move in and out. Here's some of the detail on the back. Got a whole bunch of his little hydraulic lines all over him. So yeah, he's looking really good, you guys. I'm going to swap out the heads here, and you can see we can put the other 
display head on there and you can see we've got the uh, the screen with Kane freaking out would have liked to put a little miniature LCD screen in there and had that animated I've seen a couple of builds where they actually did that and it looked totally awesome just spin it around one more time I've tried to put the texture and everything on this I noticed when they show him he looks kind of almost like he's wet you know he looks um pretty glossy and they've got these rough textures on the body in different spots like I said it looks like they hand painted it and purposely didn't do a perfect job of it so it looked a little bit you know greasy and uh, just kind of you know really highlighted the textures and everything of it we'll kind of pose this back out here like that that shoulder and then elbow can move and all that too and his hand can rotate but I don't want to do a whole lot of that because uh, it actually is pretty fragile being made out of resin. Once I get him in a pose that I kind of like him, I'm going to kind of leave him that way. So this turned out really great, you guys. I'm really happy with it. And um, again, uh, shout out to Kenny May out there for putting together this um, awesome tribute build. We'll go ahead and uh, zoom in on this head here a little bit for you. Get a little bit better shot of the upper half there. And um, thank you for Kenny to put together this uh, Celebrating the Life of Chris Cortell tribute build. Maybe this will become an annual thing so that we don't ever forget Chris. I know nobody will. There's a lot of people. I've been going around watching all the different videos that have been coming out about Chris and people paying their respects and all the memories they have and everything. So that will never stop. And hopefully his channel will stay up for a long time. And we can always go back, like people have mentioned, and and uh, watch some of Chris's videos and hear him again. And um, that way we can always be reminded about the great stuff he was doing. Um, Chris was an excellent modeler, but he was even better at uh, how he treated people in the community. And I think that's the thing that people are really remembering the most, and that's just awesome. There's nothing more you can ask than that. So, you know, when you leave your legacy behind, the way you remember it, if people think of you fondly, that's the best you can do in life, guys. So, um uh, but okay, this is a wrap for Kane. Uh, fun time 3D printing this. Had a lot of fun with it again. And uh, just getting into this whole new world. There's a lot of neat subjects that I'm finding out there. So you can expect to see more types of projects like this coming down the road, you guys. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And take care and happy modeling, everyone.